Blog Talk Radio. You're listening to Talent Culture's T-Chat Radio. The world of work is live now on the radio with Megan M. Biro and Kevin W. Grossman, because middle initials count. Come down, turn the radio T-Chat Show Land. It is a, another great Talent Culture T-Chat Show, and it is, we are live in fabulous Las Vegas at the end, the tail end of the 2015 HR Technology Conference and Exposition. And with you, as always, is Kevin W. Grossman, and of course, the lovely and talented Megan M. Biro. Hello, Megan. Hello, Kevin. It's great to be here in La 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 Las Vegas, <laughs> having a great time. And I want to welcome the community to another informative Talent Culture Tea Chat show. Um, I certainly want to give a special shout out to all of our sponsors, Mashfly, iSims, Dice, Jive, TalentWise, IBM, CareerBuilder, PeopleFluent, SmartSearch, Workable, and our social analytics partner, HR Marketer Insight. And certainly want to give all you friends and colleagues out there a shout out at the Candidate Experience Awards. I'm a proud member of the Talent Board. I volunteer my time uh, along with Kevin, of course, who is their new head mucky muck there. So That is my title. By that way. is his title, is head, head mucky head muck. 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 Yeah. Um, so we're, we're stoked. It's been a really fun time in Vegas. I have met so many interesting startups that, you know, have um, – really blown my mind. There's some really interesting new technologies that are emerging that fit into the enterprise pretty nicely. There's larger brands who are doing a lot of uh, moving and shaking to try to, you know, stay with the time. So, I mean, there's just... And we got um, and and, and, and the amazing right. brands that are around the table right now. Oh my God! Uh, we have like celebrities here. And <laughs> just, like crazy. In just a couple of minutes, we're going to introduce them, and we're here live. This is fun. We've only done this a few times in the past. We did yep. it. We did it at Sherm. We did it in Ireland together right. with, with folks around us, and now we're doing it again at HR Technology. Absolutely. So let's share what we're going to talk about. Sure. So last week we talked about three steps to selecting the right HR technology. And this week we're going to be talking about why recruitment should be transparent marketing, which is kind of a fun take on it. Um, today's hiring economy is highly complex and competitive, and finding top talent is harder than ever. In fact... Attracting candidates and retaining current employees is kind of a lot like attracting and retaining, guess who, customers. Mm -hmm. So candidates want to be valued and have an engaging and transparent, quote-unquote, air quotes, experience. Mm -hmm. And how you treat them has a direct impact on your brand right now. So in today's digital age where people share experiences online, you've got your employees tweeting, your CEOs maybe even tweeting, right? We've got all sorts of information that is is just present and available to us right now. So a poor candidate experience can be bad for business and translate to millions in lost revenue annually. The fact is, I think each and every one of us are job seekers and perpetual candidates. Even if you're currently happily employed, the influence of new technology and social media has changed the way people apply for jobs, let's be honest, right? Hiring companies now need to leverage new processes to attract the right candidates. Old techniques are simply old school at this point. They won't work. Today's job seeker wants career development opportunities, a great company culture, and a positive experience, which is why I believe transparent marketing is so critical and timely. So that's our topic today. If you're listening out there, and I certainly hope you are, and you want to participate in the Twitter chat portion during the show right now or for the T-Chat Twitter chat portion right immediately following the podcast, do it. We want to hear from you and hear your thoughts and insights. And remember, we're a um, – well, we're always here every week, so you know that. So, anyways, let's get on with the show, shall we? Yes. Let me inter- introduce our uh, fantastic guest. And first is Susan Vitale, Chief Marketing Officer at Ithens. We've also got Lori Sylvia, Chief Marketing Officer at Smashfly. And we've got Michelle Elner, who's the Director of Marketing at Montage, and we are going to let each of you, so go, let's come back to Susan. Susan, tell us a little bit more about yourself, your background, and 
what's led us to be talking about this topic today. Yeah, so hi everyone. Thanks so much for um, joining us today and thank you Kevin W. and Megan M. for having us. Well done. Well played. Well played. Uh, As you mentioned, Kevin, I'm the CMO of ISINS. We provide talent acquisition suite to about 4,500 organizations all over the world. We are based in New Jersey. I've been with the company for about 10 years, and I am personally really passionate about this topic because we've seen that recruitment has had some parallels to sales for many, many years, selling candidates on an opportunity, on an employer brand, and so on. But what we've seen is that uh, sales reps can't really be that successful nowadays without really strong marketing machines behind them. So I think it's perfectly timely. There are tons of cool technologies and uh, case studies out there that people can reference and leverage to learn how to do this well. And looking forward to getting into it. Absolutely. Thank you so much, sure Susan. Lori, tell us a little bit about, more about you and Smashfly and your take. Okay, great. Well, yeah, thanks again for having me. It's been a great week here in Las Vegas. This is a great way to end, yeah, right? end the show, um, talking about my favorite topic, which which is which is recruitment marketing. Yep. So, um, again, yeah, hi, I'm Lori Sylvia. I'm welcome, the marketing welcome. Officer at Smashfly. Um, Smashfly has been around since 2007, and we provide a recruitment marketing platform, which is like marketing automation software for recruiters. Um, and I'm really excited about Smashfly's mission because I see this as an opportunity to bring best practice marketing principles to the process of recruiting. And one of the things um, that we think about recruitment marketing and, and the need to be transparent when you are doing recruitment marketing is, um, is that the recruiting process is about converting applicants into hires. And recruitment marketing's job comes first, which is right. to find and attract leads and convert them into applicants so that recruiters have more qualified candidates to source from. So today is going to be a great discussion. I'm sure we're going to talk about a lot of um, tactics sure and are. strategies yep. that, uh, that, that practitioners can use to, to do this effectively. Excellent. Thanks, Lori. And, and if, last but certainly not least, Michelle, Eleanor, tell us a little bit more about you and Montage, please. Yeah, thank take. you. So similar to these guys, my background comes from both the recruitment and the marketing. I mean, I went to school for marketing, and interestingly enough, really the three companies I've worked for post-school have all had a mission related to recruiting, a mission related to putting people to work. So blending what I studied and what I love best with marketing with putting people to work, it seems to work very well together. From a montage perspective, our mission is about transforming the hiring experience. And that is very candidate-centric, but it's also about the recruiters and the hiring managers. And what we've seen, of course, with video, I mean, we have video interviewing and voice interviewing. Mm -hmm. We've seen our clients embrace the video in so many unique ways, all the way from, you know, sourcing through onboarding, and it helps tremendously to tell that company's story, to make sure job candidates understand why they would want to work at this company, absolutely embracing all the recruitment marketing principles and pulling it into the technology, making it really easy for candidates and, and for recruiters to tell their story. Absolutely. You know, real, real quick before we go to the next question, I, I've been I've been in, in, on the marketing side of our space for a long time as well, mm-hmm. and um, I'll really um, consider you all amazing peers in that, in that regard. You guys rock when it comes to content marketing. I just want all yeah. three of you. I yeah, want to tell you that right now. I, I've you never much. seen. Thank you. We live for that. Yeah, no, it's, it's awesome. You guys do a really, really good job. So enough, enough of that. Kudos, staff. Let's go, let's go, <laughs> right. to, let's go to the next question. So happy. What's up with that? Come on. It's, it's you know, it's, 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 it's like, it's like, yeah. I love that. No, 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 no doubt it. about it. Come on. It's Christmas time in Vegas. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, you know, Susan, I want to start with you. Um, tell us a little bit more about your background and what led you specifically to the topic that we're talking about today, just in a nutshell. Yeah, so I joined ISIMS uh, just a few months after I graduated college. At the time, the company was uh, about 34 employees. Uh, we had a couple of cubes around a, a small office space in central Jersey, and now we're about 500 employees. I've been with the company for 10 years. Um, so things have changed significantly. There are a couple right. of core tenets about the company that have absolutely remained uh, intact regarding company culture and who we are as an employer. Um, but ultimately, I started off in a marketing role at ISIN, just helping clients and prospective clients understand the space a little bit more, understand technology and what was available, some of the benefits of using recruitment technology, writing case studies about our clients. 
Um, and now we are, as I mentioned, about 500 employees. We've got about 75 in marketing alone. Um, and so seeing wow. the world converge. Yeah, that's amazing. Recruitment and marketing is sort of, uh, it's wonderful. It's so cool. Um, so I'm personally passionate about it. Recruitment and marketing has become a really good part of my day-to-day because I oversee the ISIS brand. Uh, we're hiring like crazy. We're growing about 35% year over year. So we've got a ton of hiring to do. And owning the recruitment marketing function is something I'm, I'm really glad is part of my purview. Oh, that's neat. Yeah. And congratulations for actually being in a company for a decade. Yeah. That is just so rare these <laughs> yeah, days. So that's, uh, that in and of itself is, speaks volumes to the brand. Absolutely. And you being so passionate about what you do as a marketer. Oh, I love the um, Icing brand. It, it warms yeah. my heart to see yeah. um, how far we've come. And it's funny, at HR Tech, usually you see the same people, but always in a different polo. Right. Uh, they've transitioned yeah, right. a lot over the years. Sure. Uh, so it's really nice to have the longevity. And our founder and CEO is still very involved. Our CEO. Adam uh, has been my mentor. He's been with the company for about 14 years, so we have a lot of long timers uh, at Eisen, which is wonderful. Love. Yes. Okay, Miss Lori, tell us a little bit about you. I know this is this is your debut, right? On T Chat, absolutely. On T Chat, yeah. so welcome. Thank you. Thrilled to have you. Thank you. And you know, I I live and work in Cambridge, Massachusetts, so it's nice to have neighbors here, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So tell us a little bit more about what you're passionate about. So I've been in marketing and communications for 20 years. I started out as a journalist, um, which is funny, and then crossed over into marketing. And I've worked for a number of um, technology software startups and helped grow those businesses into market leaders. And about a year ago, I was approached by Smashfly um, about the CMO position and an opportunity to join the company. And I don't come from talent acquisition. I haven't been a recruiter, but I know marketing. This is at my core. Right. And what I saw was a really interesting time and an opportunity within talent acquisition that I saw that talent acquisition leaders were really struggling with the top part of their funnel. They were starting to think about recruiting as a funnel, and they were struggling with what happens um, with how do you engage um, uh, pre-applicants, basically. We're now calling them leads because we think it's a very simple way to talk about someone before huh. they apply. Huh. But, um, but an opportunity to really transform um, talent acquisition in order to get better results. And I personally see a lot of parallels with the way talent acquisition has been um, evolving and changing um, in the last few years to, to what I went through as a marketing leader 10 years ago. Mm-hmm. The, 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 um, the ability for software tools to come into my right. discipline and, and make me um, more efficient, allow me to um, demonstrate my results more effectively, um, and showcase marketing as a science, I think this is exactly what we're trying to do for talent acquisition leaders um, with our product, with our recruitment marketing platform. It's an amazing opportunity and a great challenge, and it's a wonderful company. Great people. Um, yes, people. you guys have an awesome culture. <laughs> we have a really fun brand. Really fun. Um, and, and you have new office space. We do. It's a great um, – if anyone is in um, the Boston area, yep. uh, please contact me. and Let's come. You're welcome to come by and visit. We're in um, an historic mill building in Concord, Massachusetts. That's so, so awesome. Uh, I have to stop place. by. I still am overdue. So maybe we'll do that the next couple of weeks. Let's do it. Let's let's have it's, some fun. Yeah, the good news is that um, a lot of or, a lot more progressive organizations and I know, you know, of course I'll plug the talent board and the candy the can experience where winners, they are treating recruitment marketing as mm-hmm. digital marketing as what needs to be done today. Right. And they've always done in parallel. Absolutely, so. Yeah. So why don't you why don't you top us off then, Michelle, sure. with, with that, and then we'll dive into some some bigger questions too. But. Yes, thank you. I guess I can't talk about my background without kind of telling the manpower story because that's where I grew up. You go, lady. Sure. So um, coming out as a adult and entering the work world, um, my first little stint was actually in an HR department doing oh, of really? all things, writing job descriptions and doing salary compensation surveys. Uh huh. Okay, so boring, but it actually gave me an inroads into where I started, which was headquartered in Milwaukee, which is where I went back after school and everything, and I started with Manpower. And that huge field organization and all those offices and all the different marketing roles I held there was all about putting people to work. And, of course, the emphasis in that environment was speed yep. and quality. And um, at the later um, part of my career there, I was in the candidate marketing side. 
and finally some attention into all of those people who came into the Manpower organization either digitally or physically through the offices and really examining what they went through. And it was fascinating. And it was fascinating to find out, oh, my gosh, where's the black hole? Oh, my gosh, where are the disconnects? And trying to conquer that and figure that out. Well, in the meantime, of course, Montage growing up and coming into its own, and that's when you know I went over to be the director of marketing for Montage when it was quite small and at the beginning and building out the marketing and the brand and the presence for this company. So I've been over at Montage for four years. Mm-hmm. And, and that's um, a nice stint. Four years? Yeah. Is, you know, it's not the ten. Not the ten. But, you know, getting there. It's still like, still like 28 years in, in, in yeah. software years. <laughs> right. Right. And getting that story told and getting that brand known and, and really the mission that we have puts the traditional hiring process on trial sure. and on notice to say it doesn't work. It's the, the, the today's job candidates and the demands of modern talent acquisition require change. Yeah. They require speed, but they require this attention to quality. And there are so many ways that video, and interestingly enough, I would say, you know, you need your alliance with your marketing department. I learned a lot at the symposium uh-huh. um, from last week that those talent acquisition departments, they don't necessarily have their own budget for all this wonderful recruitment no. marketing they want right. to do. They have to align themselves with their corporate marketing yes, departments and work in concert with them. But yet you you still have to keep the authenticity that TA wants mm-hmm. in working with those marketing departments to make sure that it doesn't become photoshopped to an unrecognizable right. You know, way. So, right. anyway, there's just a lot of really cool things happening with our company and ways we can contribute. Well, to me, this is a really fascinating topic because I'm actually a former practitioner in the recruiting space, as many of you know. And I feel like in the last five years, I've become more of a marketer. And I think the rest of the world would probably agree with me that, you know, I am definitely no longer, I have a practitioner's heart and mind as I approach talent management and the future of work. And that's what I'm excited about. But more and more, I feel like a marketer. And so, you know, I think this, I think others are out there too, other practitioners going, you know, we're getting more and more creative with our teams. And I want to be more like yeah. a practitioner. And you want to be, yeah, Kevin and I so are actually having rolled over. It's funny how that's going. Really, it's really funny. Yeah. Let's, let's, so. talk, let's talk about some, the, some talent board data. Let's jump to um, and talk about. Because cool. We, yeah. So because yeah. recruitment is, is we talk about transparency. It's a buzzword, but it's true. Um, and the fact is that according to the 2015 Talent Board Canada Experience data, which has progressively just been getting more an increase, and we've seen all sorts of surveys about this. Folks are sharing stuff online about their Folks, numbers. you said the word. I did. See, that's the bingo thing right there. Buzzword. <laughs> Folks are oh. sh- they're sharing their Both. experiences everywhere, good and bad. Right. So 80% said they'd likely share a positive recruiting experience with their inner circle. Yep. And then 66% said they'd share the negative one. Now, when you talk going out on social, it's a little bit less, but still dramatic numbers considering we had 130,000 candidates respond to our survey, right? 53 said they would share the positive stories, and 33% said they'd share the negative one. Yeah. So why don't, let's, let's go the other way now. Michelle, I'll start with you and talk about what do you recommend companies do to address the negative ones and to leverage the positive ones? How do we use those stories in recruitment marketing? Right, my goodness. Well, big question. I know. It's lots, a huge lots, question. Of, lots of nuggets. There. I mean, anytime there's any anything negative out there on the on the interwebs and all of the stuff that you have to address, it just has to be addressed head on. It has to be addressed politely, yep. and then you know invite the conversation to take place offline. There's no end to um, all the opportunities people have to share their thoughts and feelings. Absolutely. And, um, I mean, today, so everybody has to be cautious and careful. And no matter how good your processes are and how good your open and honest communication is, you're going to encounter some of that. We, um, you know, one of the little data pieces, because we do research, of course, not to the 130,000 survey respondents, oh, my gosh, we don't do that. But very similarly, we found there is a 60% gap from people who have a poor experience through the hiring process, would they recommend the company? It was like 28%. But if they had a really good experience, the 89% said they would recommend. So we talk to all the time. There's this huge gap between those who have a great experience and those who have a poor experience sure. and what they're going to talk about all the time. So using the good and, um, ugh, I guess, addressing the bad immediately. Yes, because that's happening, too. There, there's good and bad. Let's be honest mm-hmm. here in this discussion. I mean, on social, 53% will share positive stories publicly, mm-hmm. online, everywhere. 33% will share their stories, um, you know, anybody. It, to anybody, and it could be negative. Right. Yeah. So, 
we'll, you know, that, that this is a real time issue. It is. And I think one other thing to add, though, is just this notion for companies, especially those who have consumer brands and have consumer products and services, they can just put themselves into the mindset to say those job candidates who are coming through are making choices about where they want to go, where, who, what they want to buy. And if we can get those companies to perceive those job candidates as future consumers of their products and services and make certain that they exit still being a fan, yes. still being a purchaser of their products and services, I think it takes this whole movement of the candidate experience awards and all of that to just the, the, the next level as people start realizing how important that is. There was two sessions that I went to yesterday. One was with Marriott, Marriott which I've been told it's not Marriott, it's Marriott. Oh, oh, really? Yes, mm-hmm. Jessica Lee really? corrected me on that one. I've, I've been, I'm sorry. I, my apologies to the Marriott folks. <laughs> but uh, wow. that and then also UPS. But anyway, in both of the sessions, they were talking about mobile recruiting and social. But they, the couple of the takeaways from there, though, is that they are addressing across all these various channels both positive and negative sentiment that's happening out there when people are applying and they, you know, they're not hearing back or they're getting dispositioned or whatever the, the case is, they are addressing it. The customer service like brands are doing on the, the product side or the service side when they're using social channels as customer service Same channels. Same thing. So, so Lori, what, what's your thoughts on, on this, uh, the, the data, the topic that we were just discussing in regards to, you know, how do you leverage those? I'll share an example from one of our customers. Good. Okay. So um, CDW, which has been a smash fly customer for several years, um, they gave a phenomenal presentation in June at the HCI conference in Boston. And it was all about employer branding. Um, and the woman from, from CDW, her name is Jen Macy, she shared that um, for them, they needed to really understand what people were saying about the brand. Mm-hmm. So they went to online reviews. Mm-hmm. And they made it um, kind of a practice to respond to the reviews, even right. if the reviews were negative. Because mm-hmm. they're going to be. Yep. Right. And they started, um, they knew that they could influence their their positive um, rating on, on Glassdoor in particular by inviting um, new hires who were just onboarded to, to, to write a review and also employees who had just passed their year anniversary. Um, by doing that, they significantly increased their Glassdoor rating. They then used that in the um, hiring process. So when they have made offers to candidates and they know that there are competing offers for right. those amazing quality hires that they're trying to make, they will actually send, it's part of the automation that they can use with, with the Smash Live platform, to those uh, candidates to try to influence their decision mm-hmm. to take their career to, to CDW. Interesting. And I think it's a great practice. It's how do you deal with, with positive and negative feedback and how do you use that to, to influence um, the candidate yep. journey. And one other data point I would share is that when you do have these great employee stories, put them on your career site, use them in your yes. marketing and other ways. One of the research, uh, so we, we've started to do our own research too, just, just mm-hmm. like Montage, and we, um, over the summer, surveyed the, the career sites of the 2015 Fortune 500. And we found that 57% put employee stories on their career mm-hmm. sites. Mm-hmm. So the largest... Um, companies in the world who spend the most on talent acquisition, who yep. make the most hires, already see that this is a really important way of connecting with 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 leads, essentially. Yep. And and please, please make your career site mobile. Just do me a oh, favor. And maybe it's not. Yeah, right? Yeah. I mean, I'm just saying. Be doing that for free. There you go. If your ATS is not giving you a mobile optimized career site without charging you for it, you're working with the wrong people. Yeah. yeah, there you go. Be modern now. Yeah, right. Sing it, sister. You go, girl. <laughs> well, no, I'm serious. What about you? What are your What are your comments, thoughts on how we leverage? Address the negative, leverage the positive. Yeah, so I guess I have a slightly different take in that there are times when companies immediately respond to every bit of feedback and it makes them look petty. Um, You have to be really careful in the way in which you address some of this negative feedback and saying, I don't know, if someone complains about X, Y, Z, saying, our policy is whatever, um, it oftentimes looks a little petty. And and I think some of the good examples you can see from the consumer side is if you're on Yelp and someone writes a review about a Mm -hmm. restaurant and someone comes back and maybe they didn't wait five minutes and take a breath before they responded or what have you, but um, it it sometimes can backfire. Um, It really depends, I think, on what the negative feedback is. If it's something around 
nobody ever got back to me or, or what have you. To me, that's a process that's broken. And certainly you can respond and say, we're so sorry or, or something along those lines. But to me, that's a much larger issue. Uh-huh. Um, if someone's saying that the recruiter was a jerk or something along those lines, I think that there are opportunities to respond. Um, and absolutely anything positive you want to share the hell out of that. That's yeah, wonderful. Right, That's absolutely right. wonderful. Right. Um, but you're right. There's nuance. And it's absolutely. how you respond and it's context and it's real time. And you don't want to look desperate. Exactly. You don't want to look petty. Exactly. Those are brilliant points. Yeah. I think it's it's a company culture and how they decide to respond, um, whether it's to regular marketing feedback on the, cons- on the consumer brand or the candidate experience. Um, don't get me wrong. I think the candidate experience is paramount. It's really just figuring out the best ways to respond to different bits of feedback um, while maintaining your dignity Mm -hmm. (laughs) and uh, and staying the high ground. Mm -hmm. Excellent. So as we know, candidates have consumer-like experiences Mm -hmm. now, right, and expect this engaging, transparent experience. They're looking for jobs they would like they would major purchases, basically, right? So how are you, Lori, at Smashfly, helping your customers better serve up these experiences. Just give us uh, just a couple of sound bites. And, and keep it tight, ladies. Yep, we're, I, we're running, I want to make sure I'm going to get all three of you in on that. No pressure. No pressure. Um, just quickly, yeah, mm-hmm. I think the yeah. key thing we do is we help our customers track source of influence, not just source of hire. So, um, so we can track a candidate's journey through every touch point that they make with, with one of our customers' brands. And not only pass into the ATS the last thing that they clicked on, um, which would be the source of, of hire as far as the ATS is um, concerned, but within that leads record as they convert it to becoming an applicant, we can track every single marketing campaign, tactic, et cetera, that they engaged in, from whether they clicked on a link on your Twitter feed to opened an email to click through, et cetera, et cetera, visited pages on your career site. And I think this is one of the ways that our customers are now understanding the real influence of all of their marketing mm-hmm. tactics and what is working and what's not working. Mm-hmm. Excellent. And what about you, Michelle? Yeah. yeah. Um, for us, I, I think you know we, when we work with our clients and if they're uh, a talent acquisition department that's done their homework, which most of them have, they really they really know. They know what right fit talent looks like. They know what they sound like. They know what they behave like. And we give them opportunities to put that out on display. And we give them opportunities to allow the job candidate marketplace to sort of to meet the hiring manager and meet the peer team before they're meeting them. If right. you know what I mean. Because it's a yeah. video. So if you wanted to put out great. into the into the welcoming um, entry into coming in to do a, a video or a phone interaction with the technology, you don't just put out a – you can, of course, put out just a corporate video that everybody sees, but you don't have to. If right. it's the entryway for the call center hiring, then put the call center team out there. Mm-hmm. Put the call center hiring manager out there. Very different than if you're hiring that project analyst or very different if you're hiring the CFO. And you get a very custom welcoming experience so that – when you are being asked questions, you can hear and see the questions coming from the hiring manager, from their heart. That's sure. super I, powerful. I, you know, I've done this myself to say, I just don't want to read the question. I want to give the context behind the question. And if somebody's seeing me as the hiring manager asking the question, they need to make a decision whether or not they want to yes. work there. Excellent. Thank you, Michelle. Sorry, I went, Susan, before we run out of time, what are the, out, the sands of the hourglass? <laughs> Yeah, I think one of the most important things we do is keep it holistic. Uh, The candidate experience is not just the recruitment marketing piece when they're an initial lead. It is uh, recruitment marketing, applicant tracking, new hire onboarding, and we're able to paint a really holistic picture for people to see, is this even working, and then customize the candidate experience. Um, So I will leave it at that. Fantastic. so much to everybody at the HR Technology yes. Conference here in Vegas, to Steve uh, and team. Uh, everyone's been so welcoming to myself and brands and vendors alike. So thank you, Jean, and everybody else who's made this a really wonderful experience. Thank you to these talented ladies that I have here. I'm so honored. Girl power. <laughs> we have yeah. three marketing, you know, powerhouses here at the table with thank us. You. So I'm very honored, and thank you. Yes, and be be high power, pays respect. All right. There you go. All right. Thanks, ladies. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. Time for Twitter chat, everybody. All right. Let's do it.